developer odd statements that need reiterating in regards to update slowdown and frequency, persisting bad performance and still missing features, barely above 50% score on Steam reviews, and most of all, rock bottom player counts. Kerbal Space Program 2, one of the most awaited space games in recent times, seems to have met a very harsh reality. And one could even start asking, is Kerbal 2 dying less than six months after initial public early access release? Well, come with me and let's take a look. Kerbal Space Program, a game that your nerdy friends probably have mentioned at least once. Even if it was, hey bro, look at the rocket I made! And then, inevitably, fundamentally, Kerbal Space Program is a phenomenally great science game that promotes learning and education as you explode and fail. So, when the time came for Kerbal 2 to be announced and released, it geared up to be more refined, modern version with all the benefits you get from uniform development, tools, and more importantly, experience and hindsight. However, to many dismay, Kerbal 2 once more launched in early access, seemingly light years from being finished, at a full price tag of $50, no less. Now, I come in the Kerbal story really as an outsider. While I personally covered extensively the true space sims, the subgenre of space simulators, and yes, there's a small difference, was quite alien to me. I love what Kerbal did with the boring and dry science numbers and engineering jargon, turning it into a clown shoes joke but not in the Battlefield 2042 or Redfall kind of way. It wasn't aping a real hard mechanics for some pathetic facsimile of a gameplay, but instead elevated it to being the best cheerleader for it. When I released my quote-unquote review for Kerbal 2, I was genuinely happy to see fantastic and inviting tutorials, so I was being kind and forthcoming, despite seeing major flaws. <sighs> Call this cynical, hypercritical, Latvian naive, but I was willing to give Intercept Games and its parent Slave Driver Take 2 a break. Today though, I wonder, was I too generous? From the intro, you already saw the horrible state the Kerbal 2 is in, so I tried to distill the problem and find the root causes, and what I came up with were, well, rather obvious, three major problems. There are no two ways about it, Kerbal 2 is buggy. This should come as no surprise, but when your rockets are flopping around like sausages in a wind tunnel, no one can be blamed for wanting to turn off the game that's supposed to be as rigid as a Catholic priest. Oh, wait, that's a bad example. Still, developers recently mentioned how hard it is to QA test every little thing and how many combinations there are, etc, etc. Well, as a wannabe game developer myself, hell, somebody who simply knows how to code, I feel like this can be a gross over-exaggeration, but it might not also be untrue. See, depending on how well the game is planned out, coded and handled, QA may be dealing with a lot more or fewer test cases, so I don't envy their task. After all, testers often get used as literal cum socks in this industry. Plus, let's be frank, this is an early access game, there are bound to be bugs, right? Well, yeah, sure, true. Intercept Games and Take-Two decided to release Kerbal 2 in early access, so that kind is to be expected. However, Kerbal 1 launched on Steam in 2013 in similar early access state. Back then, in the Dark Ages, where asset flips were roaming high and public's tolerance for unfinished games actually was a lot lower and less accepting overall for this kind of development. So then, why even back then you see barely any negative Steam reviews? If today's average Joe is more accepting of the industry's bullshit, then why? Why is Kerbal 2 getting pilloried for the state it's in? So maybe I'm wrong, and public standards have risen. After all, Kerbal 2 is not alone anymore in the space simulator genre. You get Orbiter 2016, and of course, most of all, Kerbal 1 to go back to and compare directly. So maybe this kind of haphazard, bug-filled release that Kerbal 2 was and still is, is not accepted anymore. Though this is the least of Intercept Games' problems. You know, it's kinda hard to say which is the bigger problem, the performance or the other one. Well, you know, I'll go with the performance being the middle one, but barely. Generally speaking, yes, Kerbal 2 has better textures, better engine, newer graphics API, modern tooling, that the game from 2011 or 13 or 15, you know, Kerbal 1 does not have. 
You put a few parts on a rocket, okay, you're flying fine with <coughs> modern graphics card and uh, somewhat smooth 40 FPS, but you strap a few too many parts on it and it all goes to shit. Far too many instances I've seen and heard my fellow creators and players comment that you strap 20 parts on your rocket and you can start seeing Star Citizen level of gameplay, while in the background your GPU and CPU are committing Sudoku. This more than any point is reflected in today's Steam reviews as the main cause for the problems, closely followed by the number one problem of today. Ah, but Yamex, you say? Again, this is early access, don't you expect that to be part of it? That's just unreasonable to expect otherwise. Well, sure. But here on lies the main question about the performance and bugs. Why release an early access at all? Seems that many game companies are willing to shit the bed and call it art with the early access that they seem to have forgotten what the hell that even stands for. Should we automatically hand wave mismanaging planning or general fucks given just because they said, oh, expect bad things, okay? Okay, thanks, bye. Kerbal 2 was already delayed a few times. See, back in 2020, developers changed and Take 2 literally tried poaching the original Kerbal 2 developer team to make Intercept games and pull the contract under Uber Entertainment, who soon after folded, for obvious reasons. So the new release was planned for 2022, and that didn't seem to work out either, and so here we go with a 2023 delay. And clearly, players can feel that something that was announced in 2019, yes, 2019, is half-baked at most, even for the features we have. But even if they had problems with Kerbal's 2 development, the big question still remains. Why release in early access and not delay for two to three years or something? I suppose Take Two or Developer Intercept thought that they could slide this gruel in our prison cell and expect us to munch on it regardless. Maybe they thought that the original Kerbal Space Program took the early access, they could repeat it, since the fans were gullible, <coughs> sorry, I mean accustomed to this cockery. Well, sadly, or happily, it seems that the fans of the game are not, and we can see the result today. And finally, we come to what at least I think is the biggest reason for, well, let's be frank here, death of Kerbal 2. The features. Simple fact is, even in early access, if Kerbal 2 had nearly all the features its predecessor had, this would have been a surefire win for the game. However, we are missing, uh, now let's see, auto struts, Jesus that one hurts my soul, career and science modes, re-entry and heat mechanics, and I'm sure far more, but these are the obvious ones. Intercept did publish a roadmap back before even the launch, and we could see back then that the science would not be part of the first launch feature list, but even when you're missing some smaller and larger notable features as a whole, well, what more than disappointment can you feel? And many people started questioning, does this really look like a four-year development since 2019? On the bright side, however, interstellar travel and multiplayer along with a few additional things were planned for the game that wasn't in the original, so it wasn't all bad, right? In the videos even, they showcased some of the ideas, and this is where it all went wrong again. Much like Star Citizen, the questionable and even sometimes downright misleading marketing of what the features or even how well the game functions only led to disappointment, and quickly so. Still, at the end of the day, the sad reality of Kerbal 2, even today, a couple of months after its first public debut, is Kerbal 2 launched with fewer features than Kerbal 1 has, and it was a glaring display of how fewer there were. While all of the time this game is being sold on a trust me bro for a full price. So tell me, do you really want to buy a full priced game that's guaranteed not to be good for the next 3 to 4 years at least? Again, sure, there are those Star Citizen-like fans, but you first got to jingle something shiny in front of them, otherwise, forget about it. And then, do you really wonder why Steam reviews are barely above 50% positive either? However, the absolute saddest thing here is the Kerbal itself. See, much like Elite Dangerous and its bedshitting explosion, Odyssey expansion, the latest bad thing can be so bad it contaminates not only the bed, your room, the Soviet blockhouse, but the whole city. And by that I mean this. You can see the uptick in player counts where the Kerbal 2 launched and it was a positive for both of the games. And immediately the dive bombing of one makes the other suffer along. This is the worst scenario. 
Before Kerbal 2, you can see that Kerbal 1 was enjoying a steady player base, but now, well sure, you can point and laugh at Kerbal 1 having 5 times as many players as Kerbal 2, but in reality, Kerbal 1 lost half of its player base because of this, and now that, that pisses me off. I respect, cherish, and love Kerbal 1, but this, let's be frank, fuck up is not a small one. It's a very large murder hole from which the Intercept games now have to dig themselves out. In the end, I came to basically two conclusions. First off, clearly Kerbal 2 should have been delayed. There are no two ways about it. However, now that they've decided to bomb harder than Nagasaki, much like one other capital A bomb, No Man's Sky, they have to dig themselves out of it. Well, sure, it's not impossible to do, like No Man's Sky has proven. The journey, however, is long and extremely, extremely hard. One that the publisher Take 2, I bet, is not really that willing to take. While in the recent development update, Intercept is saying that they're not worried about keeping the lights on for Kerbal 2, let's not forget about the reality of corporate game development. Here we can take an example from a true space sim genre with my Elite Dangerous. When Odyssey launched and bombed hard, over the course of the first six months already you can feel the development rate slowing down, and no doubt developers getting assigned to other projects. And today, the game is really maintained by a handful of developers or so. So tell me, does that sound familiar to you? And also tell me, are you really ready to wait 3 or more years before Kerbal 2 gets where it should have been on the first public launch, be it early access or not? And the second conclusion I came to was, well, simple as well. Intercept Games will keep on working on this game for at least the next 12 months, and for all intentions and purposes, the game is not dead, but honestly, it might as well be. And much like Bob the Necromancer will tell you, resurrection is possible, but do you know what it will cost you? It has only happened once in gaming history post-launch. And while I want Kerbal to continue delighting and educating us, in fact, I'll be the first to sing its praises, it certainly won't be for Kerbal 2. No. Kerbal 1 proved that you can truly launch an interesting idea and carefully build it up over the years and become one of the more beloved, liked and respected projects and games that go beyond just entertainment, but genuine education. And the other one, right now, is just like any other throwaway clown in the industry. 